Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers in Facebook land, in IG land, in YouTube land. I am super duper excited tonight to sit and share before you the weekly spiritual lift brought to you from Arise Den, where here at the Arise Den, we specialize in helping people to simply arise in any area that they may be stuck in. And so tonight, we wanted to share with you all tonight uh, to celebrate our moms, to celebrate our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, our friends, our loved ones on this very special pagan holiday, Mother's Day, which in, in essence, every single day should be Mother's Day. Every single day we should be sharing and celebrating our wonderful, awesome, and amazing mothers, those that who are the gateway into the earth, those who have stepped in, who may not have biology, biology birth their children, but they have stepped in and stepped up to be a mom to those of the motherless. So I am grateful tonight to be able to sit and share with you tonight on this Mother's Day. I want you to do me a favor and go ahead and tag a mom. Go ahead and tag a mom in the comments so that she can be blessed through our Arise Den. We're going to cash out. We're going to select a mom after this live on tonight, and we're going to bless her from the Arise Den so that she can get some lunch, get a pedicure, do whatever she wants to do with it. We're gonna select someone tonight to bless. So go ahead as you're coming on in, share the live, go ahead and share it in your timeline, share it on your inbox and tag a mom. It doesn't matter. You can tag as many moms as you want. I will get with my administrator later and we will go through and we will select a mom to bless for Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day and I am super, super excited to be with you. My name is Rashia B. Cox. I love the Lord and I love how he uses his different avenues to get his word out. And so tonight, I'm stretching tonight. I'm stretching tonight. Mother's Day uh, typically is a very uh, down, depressing holiday for me because I lost my mother three years ago, but I've been pressing through today. I've been joyful on today. I've been happy on today. I've been loved on today by my family and friends. And so I want to share that love with my Facebook friends tonight, my YouTube friends tonight, my IG friends tonight. I want to share that love tonight and celebrate a mom on tonight. And so we're going to go tonight to uh, the book according to Exodus tonight. Let's go to Exodus tonight and it will be Exodus chapter two. That is going to be our lift scripture for tonight. Exodus chapter two, verses one through eight. And as you're finding that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us. Don't forget to tag a mom. Don't forget to share this live. Don't forget to join in. Don't forget to engage. If you love the Lord tonight, if you love what he's doing in your life, if you're happy and you know it, you ought to show some signs in the comments. Drop some fire, drop some love, drop some praying hands in the comments on tonight and let the Lord know that you love him on tonight. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you on tonight, dear Lord God, for allowing us another opportunity, dear Lord, to share your word on tonight, Lord. God, I thank you for this another Mother's Day, dear Lord God. So many are going through this Mother's Day, dear Lord God, without their physical, natural mother here on earth, Lord. But Lord, I know you to be a prince of peace, Lord. I know you to be a way maker, God. I know you, dear Lord God, to be a Lord that will never leave us nor forsake us. So God, I ask you right now, God, to bring the joy of the Lord that is our strength, God, into this atmosphere tonight, God. I pray, Lord, as someone comes on and they join in, if they're downtrodden in spirit, if they're low in spirit, if they're heavy in spirit, oh God, that this word will cause them to arise, oh God, arise with a smile, arise with happiness, arise with joy, God, holding on to the good memories, Lord, that they may have of their mother, oh God. And even those, oh Lord, that have their mothers here on earth, God, I want to pause and celebrate them, the virtuous women women, dear Lord God, the Proverbs 31 women. I thank you, God, for all, each and every one of them. I thank you, Lord, for the fathers. I thank you, Lord, for the sons. I thank you, Lord, for the daughters, oh God. I thank you for every replay watcher, Lord, that will come on to this live, God, and catch the replay, Lord, and be blessed, Lord, for such a time as this. Lord, everything's going down but the word of God, Lord. And so, Lord, we know, God, that you said, if I be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto me, unto him. So, Lord, I ask you on tonight, God, to draw your people unto you, dear Lord God. 
God. I ask you, oh Lord, to hide Rashia B. Cox behind this sacred desk, dear Lord God, and let your Holy Spirit arise in me, dear Lord God, that not many souls be saved, God, but one soul, God, one soul at a time be saved, one soul at a time be touched, one soul at a time be reached, God, in the name of Jesus. We apply and appropriate the blood to every portion of this life on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your blood. I thank you for the blood that's been smeared all through the internet, that's been smeared all through the waves in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, God, for every witch and every warlock that would try to come on this live and try to put a hesitating spirit or a drawback spirit on this live, God. I thank you, oh Lord, that your warriors are rising up in the name of Jesus, oh God. For you said in your word that you taught our hands to war and our fingers to fight. So God, I thank you right now for warriors warring on our behalf on tonight. God, I thank you on tonight, dear Lord God, that this word will go forth in the name of Jesus. People will be lifted in their spirit, oh God, and someone will cry out, oh Lord, what must I do to be saved? I thank you and I praise you and I give your name and honor all the glory that is due unto you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on and drop some fire. Amen. Come on and drop some hearts. Amen. Our live scripture tonight is Exodus chapter two, verses one through eight. Exodus chapter two, verses one through eight. And the word of the Lord declares, now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. Come on, come on, somebody type in the comments, three months, three months. We know that is a number of completion, one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Ghost. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to go and get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Her reply was, yes, go, she answered. So the Lord, so the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. Glory to God. She says, so woman took the baby and nursed him. Verse 10 is where I will put my pen. The Bible says, when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. I want to speak on a subject tonight, a mother with a plan, a mother with a plan. We are celebrating Mother's Day on today. We are celebrating the mothers, the mothers who have gone before us, the mothers that are still here with us on here on earth. And many of us mothers are happy on today because we're still here. Many of us mothers are happy on today because we survived it all. Many of us mothers are glad today because even if our children have gone on before us, we can look on ourselves and say, I was a good mother. I might not didn't dot every I, I might not didn't cross every T, but I was a good mother. I'm a good mother. I do all I can for my children. I love them. I pray for them. I help them with their things. I encourage them. I advise them. I pray for them. I cover them. And so many of us mothers today are happy.
happy, but sometimes Mother's Day is not such a happy place. It's not such a happy moment for some mothers. It's not such a happy moment for some sons and some daughters who have lost their physical mothers to death. Glory be to God. But I want us to be encouraged on today and understand that God has given us mothers a plan. He's given us a plan that will not fail us. He's given us a plan that will prosper us. He's given us a plan that will not be of evil, but of good report. I dare you to type in the comments tonight and say, I got a plan and it's laced with good report. Come on in here. I got a plan and it's laced with good report. As I recall, I recall looking at a movie. I've looked at this movie several, several times. And every time I look at this movie, I get a different revelation from the movie. The movie is called Jumping the Broom. Where in this movie, there's a daughter, glory to God. There's a aunt, glory to God. And there's a natural mother. Well, in this movie, the woman is preparing to get married. She's she's found, she's found the one that she loves. She's found her soulmate. He found her. She bumped into them, into him, ran into him, almost killed him, but he turned out to be her soulmate. And so as she's preparing to marry her soulmate, there's many things going on in the family. The woman that she thought, glory to God, raised her, that she thought loved her, that she thought birthed her, actually raised her, but come to find out that woman was not her mother, glory to God. The woman that she became to understand and knew that was her mother, she always knew that that was her auntie. And so when it came out and the exposure came and she began to be upset within herself because she felt like her whole life had been a lie. She felt like her whole life had been something of false pretense when she came to understand that her auntie who was really her mommy was her mommy she was hurt she was broken but i began to tap into a deeper revelation of that i began to look deeper into it. somebody ought to type in the comments look deeper glory to god i begin to look deeper into it and when she began to come to her daughter and when it all got exposed when she came to her daughter she began to explain to her daughter why she gave her up, why she gave her up to her auntie and her husband, why she had to give her up. She began to let her know that I wasn't fit to raise you. Glory to God. I wasn't fit to carry for you. And I knew and understood that my sister could give you a better life. Not only did I understand it, but my mama, your grandmama, she understood that. And so she began to explain to the daughter why she gave it up. It didn't make it any easier, but the explanation, glory to God, begin to heal. The explanation begin to soothe, glory to God. And I want to encourage us mothers tonight that felt like you had to give up your children because you couldn't do right by them. I want to encourage you tonight that God still loves you. God still cares for you. And anytime you give up your child for the better, you're covering your child. You got a plan. You're seeking God. You're saying, God, whatever I need to do, whatever's necessary for my child to live, I'm going to live. And so it brings me to my text here, where in Exodus chapter one, it talks about the old Pharaoh. You know who Pharaoh is. Pharaoh is the king of bondage. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. He did not want the Israelites. The Israelites were, were increasing in number. The Israelites were getting too powerful. The Israelites were getting too above. And so he had an issue with the Israelites. He didn't want them to be free. He didn't want them to praise God. He didn't want them to be free in their mind. You ever had a Pharaoh in your life? Glory to God. You ever had somebody in your life that didn't want you to be free? They said they wanted you to be free. But every time you try to get free, every time you try to walk in the oracles of God, every time, every time you try to do the commandments of God, they have something to say. They take issue with your walk with God. And so Pharaoh began to hate on the Israelites and he began to let his people know. He said, we're going to make them and give them to the slave masters and make them oppressed. Glory to God, because I don't want them to be free. And so the Bible begins to declare that he began to give a command to the handmaidens and he began to tell the handmaidens and the midwives and he began to say to them, now these Hebrew women, they're going to be giving child birth. And when they get on the 
child on the stool, glory to God, when they get ready to get in the position to push, I want you, glory to God, to check it out, glory to God. If it's a boy, I want you to kill him. Come on here. If it's a girl, I want you to allow them to live. And so the Bible says that the midwives begin to say, oh my God, but we fear God. Well, the Bible says thou shalt not kill, glory to God, but I fear God, Pharaoh. I know what you're telling me. I know that you're the king in command right now, but what you're telling me is not in alignment with the word of God. The Bible tells me to not kill, glory to God. The Bible tells me that the man is the head, that he brought the man first, glory to God. So why did Pharaoh want all the boys killed? Why? Why you ask? Because he understood that if he killed the boys, he killed the seed of Abraham. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If he killed the boys, he killed the seed of David. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. If he killed the boys, he killed the seed of Jeremiah. My God. And so the Bible says that the handmaidens, the midwives, begin to fear God and they did not do what the king said. See, you got to know God for yourself. I don't care how many people is in position in your life. You better get to a place that you hear the Lord for yourself. It's time out to stop moving on man's mandate. Glory to God. And it's time to start moving in God's mandate. When God moves, there will be a move. Hallelujah. When God says sit still, there will be a sit still. Why? He said, if you sit still and see the salvation of the Lord, I'll do mighty and wonderful things for you. And so the Bible says that the handmaidens, that the midwives begin to say, no, we got to let these boys live. And so they begin to let them live. Glory to God. And then the, uh, the midwives begin to explain to Pharaoh and they begin to, he begin to ask them and he begin to say, why in the world are you doing this? And the Bible says that the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. In other words, the Hebrew women got the Holy Ghost. The Hebrew women got something on the inside of them that makes them push out quicker. When you bound up and you tied up, you can't push like you need to. So the Hebrew women were a little bit different than the Egyptian women. The Egyptian women, glory be to God, they were bound up in their spirit. They couldn't push like they need to. And so the Bible says that the Hebrew women were a little bit more vigorous and that gave birth before the midwives could even arrive. Where are my Hebrew women in the comments? Where are my Hebrew women that said, before you try to come and take my seed, I'm going to push it out already. I'm going to swallow it already. I'm going to nurse it already. Glory to God. Before the Egyptian midwives try to come and take my promise, I'm going to protect what God's got for me. Where are my men that says that old Pharaoh didn't want you to live. He didn't want you to be here today, but I dare every man in the comments to type in the comments and say, I'm here today. I'm alive today. And old Pharaoh didn't take my joy. Old Pharaoh can't take my peace. Old Pharaoh can't take my happiness. And so the Bible says, Oh, Pharaoh, he gave orders to other people. And he said, every Hebrew boy that is born, he must be thrown in the Nile, but let every girl live. In other words, when the Hebrew boys were born, he didn't want them to have a chance. He wanted to take them straight to the Nile River and let them go and drown. But oh, when I get to my text in Exodus chapter two, the Bible says that there was a Levite woman and she was there and she married Levi and the Bible says she became pregnant and gave birth to a son and so as she gave birth to the son the Bible says that she when she saw the son that the son was a 
blind child and she hid him for three months. Her name was Jochebed. Oh, Jochebed is the mother of Aaron, is the mother of Miriam, and is the mother of Moses. And so the Bible says that when she saw him and she gave birth to him and she understood that Pharaoh had a plan, but she understood that old Pharaoh's plan couldn't work. She had to consult the father. She had to ask God, what do you want me to do with this baby? And so she had to get a plan to align with God's plan. And so she began to have the baby for three months. And so the Bible says that she could not hide him any longer. And when she could not hide him any longer. She put him on a papyrus basket and she put a coated with a tar and a pitch. So that way when she put him out in the river, when she put him out in the Nile, he would be protected. He wouldn't drown, glory to God. He wouldn't smother, glory to God. How many of us are able to protect our promise? We know we gotta let it go. We gotta know we gotta sow in tears. But how many of us can be able to protect our promise? And so the Bible says that she put him in the bank and his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Oh, Miriam, you know Miriam. Miriam's the same one that got the tamarinds and began to praise God when they were getting ready to cross over. Glory be to God. God. And so the Bible says that then Pharaoh's daughter came down to the Nile to take a bath. And when she got there, she was walking along the river. And when she saw the basket among the reeds, she sent one of her female slaves to go and get the basket. When she opened the basket, the Bible says that it was a baby on the inside and he was crying, Lord, have mercy and she felt sorry for him see egyptians they were known to not have no heart because they was a Pharaoh's lineage. You got to watch these folks that say they love you, but their heart is hearted towards you. You got to watch folks and their associations because when you see that they are hearted towards you, the Lord will lift up a standard and protect his people. And so the Bible says that she felt sorry for the baby and she looked down on the baby and saw that the baby was a Hebrew baby. And then she said, the sister said, oh, Miriam went and asked Pharaoh's daughter, said, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to come and nurse the baby for you? She told, oh, Miriam, yes, go your way and go see and get the baby's mother. So, oh, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. Didn't even know that old Jacobed was in the vicinity and could nurse her baby. Glory be to God. So the Bible says that the woman took the baby and nursed him. And not only did she nurse him, but when she nursed him, the Bible says that when the baby grew older, the baby ended up going and being with Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son and she named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Oh, Jacob had, had a plan in mind. She knew of Pharaoh. If he would have got a hold to her baby, he would have killed her baby. So she had to develop a plan. Put him on the water, a river water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. Put him in the 
water and he gonna be all right when he got all right she was able to see her baby even though oh pharaoh's daughter took the baby on and raised the baby because she gave up and she gave up her will for that will to be done see that's what us mothers do when we got a plan of god when we got an execution from the holy ghost it's not thy will but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lean not and turn that temptation but deliver me from this evil for thine is the kingdom of the power and the glory forever and ever amen so oh joker bed she had a plan she said you ain't gonna take my baby you ain't gonna kill him ain't gonna be no premature death ain't gonna be no premature killing i want to ask us mothers tonight what have you been able to sacrifice for your child or for your children to tell the enemy you can't have my son you can't have my daughter you can't have my granddaughter you can't have my grandson you can't have my niece you can't have my nephew because i'm raising them up and i got a plan that's in alignment with the plan of god the plan of god said he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above our can all ask that I can ever ask or think. The plan of God says when the enemy comes in for me like a flood, that he will lift up a standard against the wiles of the devil. The plan of God said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. A mother with a plan knows how to pull on strongholds. A mother with a plan knows how to pull down fire a mother with a plan knows how to war in the spirit a mother with a plan knows how to do her fasting because the bible says only some things come through fasting and praying a praying mother is a mother with a plan a sanctified mother is a mother with power a holy ghost filled mother is a mother with assurance a mother with your plan protect your promise i got three nuggets for you and then i gotta get out of here my first nugget is when you get your promise protect it with all costs be just like joker bed and say you can't have my promise the lord gave me this promise i don't care what your son is doing now i don't care what your daughter is doing now god still gave you a promise keep praying keep fasting keep praising keep speaking life over them and i decree and declare that death and life is in the power of the tongue my nugget number two is when it is a god promise he will always cover it even when it's out of your will even when it's out of your sight when it's a god promise he'll always cover it i don't i'm not talking about that stuff that de that the devil sins i'm not talking about that stuff that looks like god but it's really laced with the devil's laces so i'm not talking about that stuff I'm talking about that ordained stuff that comes straight from God. When it's God's promise, baby, he going to cover it. He's going to give you an avenue. He's going to give you an execution. He's going to give you a plan to cover his promises. Don't think it lightly that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. When it's his, he covers it. Glory to God. And my nugget number three for us tonight is your promise has a purpose bigger than you. When Joker bad hid her baby she didn't understand that moses would be the one under god's leadership to be able to part the red sea for the people to begin 
free from old Pharaoh. That's why Pharaoh didn't want old Moses and any of the other Hebrew boys to live because he understood that if a Hebrew boy got his power, y'all ain't saying nothing. If the Hebrew boy heard, heard God tell him, Moses, I don't care about your stutter. I don't care about your impediment. I don't care about your weakness. I got a mandate assigned to your name and I'm ready for you to get it out. Glory to God. It does not matter about your promise. It does not matter if it looks small to you right now. It does not matter, mother, if it looks ins insignificant to you right now. It does not matter, fathers. Let me put my fathers in here tonight because we ain't selfish. Glory to God. It does not matter if it looks like your son or your daughter is going the other way. If I be a woman of God, glory to God, if you just keep on praying, if you just keep on believing, if you just keep on trusting, stop worrying, but trust him. Come on in here. Stop doubting him, but trust him. Give your children to him. I'm talking to myself. Give that boy to him. Give that girl to him. Glory to God. And watch him work your plan out in Jesus' name. When a mother has a plan from God, hallelujah, everything is going to work out. Glory to God. When a mother has a plan that is aligned, there's an alignment with God's plan. You say, well, I don't, I don't know what that plan is. Rashia, I don't pass I don't know what that, what that plan is. Go to God, seek him. The Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added to him. I dare you tonight to seek God for the plan for your life. I dare you tonight to seek him and ask him for direction. Glory to God. I dare you tonight to seek him and ask him what's next. Ask him what's the next in the blueprint. Ask him which next step you need to make. And I promise you, he may not answer you tonight. He may not answer you tomorrow. Glory to God. He may not even answer you in the month of May, but I decree and declare if you just stay before him. Glory to God. If you create an atmosphere for him to speak to you. Glory to God. If you create an atmosphere for you to hear what he has to say to you, I promise you he'll speak to you. I promise you he'll give you a plan. I promise you he'll show you his word. I promise you he'll show you his way. Glory to God. Just seek God. Seek God on tonight. Seek him for everything that you need, mothers. Seek him for everything that you need, fathers. Glory to God. And watch him give you the plan for your promise. It may look dim right now. It may look weak night right now. It may look like it's not going your way right now. But I promise you, I promise you, when we get in alignment with God and we seek him first and we trust him and acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will. I said he will direct our path. I thank him and praise him tonight for his plans. I thank him and praise him tonight for his way. I thank him and praise him tonight for his guidance. Hallelujah. I thank him and praise him tonight that no longer is Pharaoh's hold on his people. No longer is Pharaoh's hold on his sons and his daughters. We are free. The Bible says that who the son sets free is truly free indeed. He did not set us free for us to stay stuck, but he set us free for us to arise in him and give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor that's due unto him. I dare you tonight to get a plan and lace that plan in prayer. Glory to God. I dare you tonight to write it down, make it plain. Habakkuk said, write the vision, make it plain, for they that read it will run it. Why? Because if it tarries, just wait a little while. I, I dare you to type in the comment and say, I, I, I just, I'm just going to wait a little while. I, I ain't going to rush what God is doing. I ain't going to rush what God is saying. I'm just going to write it down. I'm just going to get it in my spirit. I'm just going to get it in my reservoir. I'm going to tuck it away and let God do what he do best. Because when God is ready to deliver, when God is ready to bring it forth, can't no devil in hell stop the plans of God for your life. I love you tonight. Let us pray. God, I thank you. And I praise you on tonight for a mother with a plan. I thank you, Lord, for Joe Cabez. Oh God, when she saw it started not rob you, oh God, to, to hide her son, oh God, for three months, oh God. And then when it was time for her to release him, she carefully placed him in the water, God, so that he would not die, die in the water, oh God, but that he would arise, oh God, and be a warrior and a leader to set your people free. I thank you on tonight, God, that we have that same anointing, God, on earth on tonight, oh God, that you are allowing us to arise, oh God. 
and allow us to move and navigate through this earth, oh God, as ambassadors for you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now for un any unbeliever, any unsaved mother, any unsaved father, any unsaved son, any unsaved daughter, oh God, that will come and catch the replay or even catch me live right now. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would save them on tonight. God, I thank you right now that as I am praying the sinner's prayer, God, I thank you right now. God, I'm a sinner unsaved, oh God, uh, not even doing what I'm supposed to be doing, oh God. But God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that to forgive me of all of my sins. I want to know you in the pardon of my sins, oh God. I understand, oh Lord, that you gave your blood for the remission of my sins and I want to be saved on tonight. I don't want to live another night unsaved. I don't want to live another moment unsaved. I don't want to never live a second unsaved. God, I want to be saved on tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare be so that I am saved and that I am an inheritor of your kingdom. Oh God, I thank you and I praise you and I give your name all the glory in Jesus name. God, touch every mother, touch every daughter, touch every son. Oh God, on tonight, oh God, that will come on this live, even catching the replay. Let them know that they are a mother with a plan and their mother has a plan. And even if their mother is no longer here on earth, their mother's plan and promise is being fulfilled in them. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you on tonight for this spiritual lift. I thank you on tonight, oh God, for a rise then. I thank you on tonight, oh God, for Rashia B. Cox. I thank you on tonight, oh God, for all of my Facebook friends, all of my YouTube watchers, all of my IG friends, everybody, everywhere, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. I thank you, oh not God, on tonight for you lifting up a standing on tonight through your talk and preach word. Now, God, I thank you and I praise you and I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love the Lord on tonight. I love the Lord on tonight. I want you to, I want to make sure I can go back and catch the names. Amen. So that we can sow into a mother tonight before midnight. Amen. For Mother's Day. I'm super excited. I love you. I pray that the Lord blessed you through this word of God. Share this with the mother. Share this with your friends. Share this on your timeline. Please do me a favor. If you have not gone and like Arise Den LLC right here on Facebook. Please do me a favor, excuse me, do me a favor tonight and go and like Arise Den and connect with us there on Arise Den's Facebook page. And please go to our YouTube channel and follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can catch all of our replays, all of our Arise messages, all of our uplifting messages right there on YouTube at Arise Den. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And one last announcement tonight. I would like all of the women that can and will join us this Friday with Pastor Sam uh, Robinson with the TNT uh, Prophetic Outpour Women's Gathering. It's gonna be via Zoom. We're gonna be going forth with what the Lord has called us to do and say for such a time as this. Please get together, find the registration link on my page and join us this Friday night at 7 p.m. right from the conference of your home, right from the comforts of your job, wherever you are. Join us tonight. There's a word of God for the triumphant women of God. And even if you're not saved, come on and join us anyway. We don't know what the Lord is going to do and what to say, but there's a ticket with your name on it. Join us this Friday. I love each and every one of you. Until the next week, spiritual live. Catch us right back here at Arise Den. Love you so much. This is Rashia B. Cox signing off for tonight. God bless you. And I love you.